very excited to be here. So my name is Tony Jabara. Um, uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about Spotify, where I work today, and how we've basically taken personalization and moved it onto TensorFlow. I'm the VP of engineering and also the head of machine learning. And I'm going to describe our experience moving on to TensorFlow and to the Google Cloud Platform and Kubeflow, which has been really an amazing experience for us and really has opened up a whole new world of possibilities. Um, so just a quick note, as Ben was saying, before I started at Spotify, I was at Netflix. And just like today, I'm going to talk about Spotify's homepage. Also at Netflix, I was working on personalization algorithms and the home screen of Netflix as well. So you may be thinking, oh, that sounds like a similar job. They both have you know, entertainment and streaming and home screens and personalization. Um, but there are fundamental differences. And I learned about those fundamental differences recently. Um, I joined a couple of months ago. But the biggest fundamental difference to me is it's a difference in volume and scale. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So if you look at movies versus music, or TV shows versus podcasts, um, you'll see that there's a very different magnitude of scale. So on the movie side, there's about 158 million Netflix users. On the music side, there's about 230 million Spotify users. Um, that's uh, also a different scale. Also, the content really is a massively different scale problem. There's only about 5,000 movies and TV shows on the Netflix service. Whereas on Spotify, we've got about 50 million tracks and about half a million, almost, podcasts. So if you think about the amount of data and content you need to index, that's a huge scale difference. There's also content duration. Once you make a recommendation off the home screen on, let's say, Netflix, the user is going to consume that recommendation for 30 minutes for a TV show, maybe several seasons sometimes, two hours for a movie, only three and a half minutes of consumption per track, let's say, on Spotify. And they don't replay as often on, let's say, movies, but you'll replay songs very often. So it's really a very different world of speed and scale. And we're getting a lot more granular data about the users. Every three and a half minutes, they're changing tracks, listening to something else, engaging differently with the service, and they're touching 50 million plus pieces of content. That's really a very granular data. And that's one of the reasons why we had to move to something like TensorFlow to really be able to scale and do something that's high speed and, in fact, real time. So this is our Spotify home. How many people here use Spotify? All right, so about half of you. I'm not trying to sell uh, Spotify on anyone. I'm just trying to say that many of you are familiar with this screen. This is the home page. So this is uh, basically driven by machine learning. And every month, hundreds of millions of users will see this home screen. And every day, tens of millions of users will see this home screen. And this is where you get to explore what we have to offer. It's a two-dimensional grid. Every image here is we call a card, and the cards are organized into rows we call shelves. And what we like to do is move these cards and shelves around from a massive library of possible choices and place the best ones for you at the top of your screen. And so when we open up Spotify, we have a user profile. The home algorithms will score all possible cards and all possible shelves and pack your screen with the best possible cards and shelf combination for you. And we're doing this in real time based off of your choices of music, your willingness to, recommend, uh, to accept the recommendation, how long you play different tracks, how long you listen to different podcasts. And we have dozens and dozens of features that are updating in real time. And every time you go back to the home page, it'll be refreshed with the ideal cards and shelves for you. And so we like to say there isn't a Spotify home page or a Spotify experience. Really, there's 230 million Spotify's, one for each user. So how did we do this, and how did we do this in the past? Well, up until our migration to uh, GCP, TensorFlow, and, and Kubeflow, we wrote a lot of custom libraries and, and API in order to drive the machine learning algorithms behind this personalization effort. So the specific machine learning algorithm is a multi-arm bandit. Many of you have heard about that. It's trying to balance exploration and exploitation, trying to learn which cards and shelves are good for you and score them, but also trying out some new cards and shelves that might not know if they're kind of hidden gems for you or not. And we have to employ counterfactual training and log propensities and log some small amounts of randomization in order to train these systems, in, in order to avoid large-scale A-B tests and large-scale randomization. Before we moved to TensorFlow, this was all done in custom, let's say, APIs and data libraries. And that had a lot of challenges. So we'd always have to go back and rewrite code and 
if we wanted to compare different choices of the model underneath the multi-arm bandit, like logistic regression versus trees versus deep neural nets, that involved tons of custom code rewriting. And so that would, that would make the system really brittle, hard to innovate and iterate on. And then when you finally pick something you want to roll out, when you roll it out, you're also worried that it may fail because of all this custom stitching. Um, so then we moved over to the TensorFlow ecosystem, and we said, hey, let's move on to techniques like TensorFlow estimators and TensorFlow data validation to avoid having to do all this custom work. And so for TensorFlow estimator, what we can do is now build machine learning pipelines where we get to try a variety of models and train and evaluate them very quickly, some things like logistic regression, boosted trees, and deep models, and much in a much faster kind of iterative uh, process. And then also migrating out to Kubeflow as well was super valuable because that helped us manage the workload and accelerate the pace of experimentations and rollout. And so this has been super fast for automatically retraining and scaling and speeding up our, our machine learning training algorithms. Another thing that we really rely on heavily is TensorFlow data validation, which is another part of the TFX offering. Um, one key thing we have to do is find bugs in our data pipelines and our machine learning pipelines while we're developing them and, and evaluating them and rolling them out. For example, we want to catch data issues as quickly as possible. Um, and so one thing we can do with TFDV is quickly find out if there's some missing data or data inconsistencies in our pipelines. And we have this dashboard that quickly plots the distribution of any feature and the accounts of different data sets and so on, and, and also kind of more granular things like how much is uh, the user spending on the service, what are their preferences, and so on, looking at those distributions. We caught a bug like this one on the left, which basically was showing us that in our training data, the premier uh, tier uh, data samples were missing from our training pipelines. And then on evaluation, the free shuffle tier data set and samples were missing from our evaluation pipeline. So this is horrible from a machine learning perspective, but we caught it quickly. We're able to now trigger alarms and alerts and have dashboards and look at these distributions daily so the, the machine learning engineers don't have to worry about the data pipelines into their system. So now we have a Spotify paved path, which is a machine learning infrastructure based off of Google Cloud, Kubeflow, and TensorFlow. And it has achieved significant lists off of baseline systems and popularity-based methods. Um, and now we're just scratching the surface. We want to do many more sophisticated machine learning types of explorations. And we really view this as an investment. It's an investment in machine learning engineers and their productivity. We don't want machine learning engineers to spend tons of time fixing custom infrastructure and catching kind of silly bugs and, and updating libraries and having to learn bespoke types of uh, platforms. Instead, we want to have them go on to a great kind of lingua franca platform like GCP, Kubeflow, and TensorFlow, and really think about machine learning and the user experience and building better entertainment for the world. And that's what we want to enable, not necessarily building custom, um, custom, let's say, machine learning infrastructure. And so if you're excited about working in a great platform that's got kind of a great future ahead of it, like TFX and Google Cloud and Kubeflow, but also working on really deep problems around entertainment and what makes people excited and engaged with a service and music and audio and podcasts, then you can get this best of both worlds. Um, we're hiring. Please look at these links and come work with us. Thank you so much.